Hey guys, today's tutorial is going to be on device browsers, which is a feature in Home Remote. If you haven't checked out one of the tutorials on data triggers, it might be a good idea to check those out before viewing this video, because it will just make things come together a little bit easier when viewing this video. Um, I created one, and there's also an excellent one by Brian out there, um, so you can check those out. So, device browser is basically a container that you set up in home remote. Um, this blue box here is a device browser and the way you add a device browser is, is through the controls and if you select device browser you can just drag and drop a device browser into your layout. So I'm just going to delete that one. I created one here and it's within a grid and in this case, the device browser and the grid have the same dimensions of 426 by 502. You know, that can vary depending on what you're doing. You know, you can have a grid that is one size and you can have several device browsers within that grid. So it all depends on your application. So when you're dealing with a device browser, you're dealing with a few different things, okay? Um, the first thing I'll cover is, is, is your templates. So when you set up Home Remote, you get a, a group of stock templates, and in this in this case, we're going to be dealing with lighting. So the stock template um, tile for for lighting in Home Remote, if I double click this, looks like this. Okay, and it's basically you know a grid set up with a few different labels and a toggle switch. Okay, so this is used for basic lighting control. I just want to bring up the point that this is the stock um, tile for lighting and home remote, but no way are you bound to use this this light tile. You can create your own or you can copy this tile and paste it back into templates and you can alter it, change the dimensions. Um, so that's something you'll we'll cover a little bit um, later on in the tutorial. So, you know, we, we're dealing with a tile. So, the way this is useful is that this single tile can be applied to multiple devices, whether it be 10 devices, 20 devices, 30 devices. It all depends on your setup. So, rather than creating, you know, 20 different buttons, and having to apply different data triggers to each button within your layout, you can use the device browser with a, with, a, with a tile. So this tile will basically be used for, for multiple devices. And what links this, this tile to your device is within the device properties itself. So if I if I come up here and I just pick pick one of my lighting devices, you can see the tile template is lighttile.xaml, which is this light tile. Okay, so if you were to create your own custom lighting tile, you can go in and change the tile template that the device is linked to by just coming in here and and selecting it. Okay. And the other thing you're dealing with in um, with device browsers are groups. Okay, now groups are basically, you know, the easiest way I can put it is, is if you have different light um, different rooms in your home that you have um, different switches in that you want to control, you would set up a, a group for each of those rooms. In this case, I have loft and bedroom set up. And we're going to add one more. But first, let me go out to the main page here. And I'll show you what's going on. If I run this project, you can see my device browser right now doesn't have any content. 
okay and I have three different buttons set up for three different rooms in my home okay if I click on loft you can see that this device browser is, is populated with with four lighting switches okay and those four lighting switches are the four lighting switches that I added to the group loft and if I switch to bedroom you can see the same device browser that's populated with one light and if I switch to living you can see the device browser is, is empty and that's because I haven't set up the living room group yet and I'll show you how to do that so within groups if you click the group folder and and you right click you're going to add a group collection in this case I'm going to call it living and you can see that group was created and then if you right click again you can add a group and I'm going to call this living lights okay and you can see that living lights folder was created so you can see that my loft group in loft lighting I have four devices and in my bedroom lighting I have one device okay and that correlates to what's being populated in the loft group and the bedroom group so I'm gonna click on the living's living lights folder and I'm gonna right click once again and you have a device okay and you'll have this little pop-up menu open here and what you want to do is select the lights that you want to add add to that group so let me scroll down I'm going to add this light living lights I believe if you hold down control you can yeah you can select multiple multiple lights if you want but I'm going to add that living lights and you can see um, that has been added to the group so now if I hit start and I go through my different rooms now you can see I clicked living but yet nothing got populated that that light that I added to the Living's Lights group is not showing up. Um, so let's try to figure out what's going on here. If I hit stop and I click on the device browser itself, you'll see I have some data triggers in here. Okay, and let's look at this. This is the reason why I, I, I told you guys to check out the data trigger tutorial because it'll make everything uh, come, come in a little bit clearer. And watching this video so if I go into the data trigger for this device browser there's two triggers in here and let's look at the binding okay and the element binding is loft underscore button is checked meaning when this button is checked and it's set for true the loft button is checked true fire the setter which sets the group to loft lighting which is this group right here so in turn the device browser will get populated with these four lighting devices the second data trigger is for the bedroom button bedroom button is checked true And the setter is the property group but in this case it's bedroom lighting which is that single bedroom lights device 
Now, the reason why the when I clicked the living button, nothing was populated was because I need a third data trigger. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to copy that data trigger. And I'll paste it back in. I'm going to change the element binding to living the living button is checked true to fire the setter now I need to come in here because this was a copy I need to change the group to living lighting Oops, um, I'm sorry, living lights, which is this group here. Now when I hit start, and I press living, you can see that that single light is populated into the device browser. Okay, so You'll notice that when I go through these different rooms, the content is, is centered within this device browser. You can see in the case of living and bedroom, okay, both of them only have one light added to the groups. So they, they're kind of dead in the center of that device browser. And for Loft, there's four devices, and it kind of pans out from the center. Um, to populate that device browser. Now, there are different settings in the device browser that allow allow you a little bit of control over this. So, you have horizontal alignment and horizontal content alignment and vertical alignment and vertical vertical content alignment. And the defaults when you add a device browser are are set for right and center and top and center. But if you play around with these, you, you know, you can just experiment and, and get different results based on what you need. So let me change this to left. And I'll change this to top. And see what kind of results I get now. You can see now this group, rather than being centered, is from the top left. And the bedroom will be top left, and the living room will be top left. So that's how you control that. You know, you can, depending on what you're trying to do and, you know, what you want to achieve, those settings are there for you. So it's just a matter of playing around with them to get the results. Now you'll notice that there's an empty space here. Okay, and that's because there's not a room for, there's not enough room for the third switch. Which would, be, which would be wall spots. So what it does is it pushes it down to the next row. So, you know, we can try a few things. You know, either you can go in and you can make your tile smaller to accommodate your layout, um, to make enough room for that third switch to fill the space, or, you know, in this case, maybe something a little bit simpler is I'll just come in and I'll go to that device browser And uh, I'll change the horizontal spacing. And this is the space between the tiles. Okay, right now it's set to 6. How about I change it to 2? And we'll also change the vertical to 2. So now if I hit, hit start, you can see that that third switch now populated the first row because what I did was I changed the spacing in between them I made them made it smaller so now there's enough room for that for that third device to come across so that's just another setting you can play around with to get the uh, results that you want and again bedroom and living are going to be on the top left
So, like I said, you know, what we've been using is a stock tile um, for lighting um, that comes with home remote when you install it. Um, like I said, in no way are you bound to use that. You can create your own tile. Um, I have a tile that I created here, and it's called Light Tile 1. If I double click it, it looks like this, and what it, what it has, it has a slider, you know, for, for dimming, for your lighting, um, built into it. It has a different on-off switch. Um, so, you know, basically what I did was, is, was I took the stock tile, and I just altered it. So, you know, if I go in and I, I want to use this tile instead of light, instead of the stock tile called lighttile.xaml, what I can do is, is I could come in and, you know, I'll just come in here and rename this. I'll just put underscore ORIG for original. And then I'll come into the light tile that I created that looks like this. And I'll just take that one off. Okay, so now, now this is light tile that XAML, which remember is what your device is is linked to, lighttile.xaml. So now if I come in and hit start, oops, let me switch back to page one. Now if I hit start, you can see that something different is going on here, but it's still not right. You know, everything is jumbled up. So let's try to figure out what's going on with that. If I go to my page browser, I'm sorry, my device browser, you can see that the tile height and tile width I have set is 165 by 165. And that's the reason why I'm getting this. effect here. It's because the tile height and tile width are not big enough to accommodate my new tile. So let me go into that tile and see what the dimensions are. 126 by 502. So what I'll do is, is I'll come in I'll come into that device browser, and change the tile height to 126, and the width to 502. I'll hit start, and now you can see that that template, that new tile template is, is populating into the device browser. That's for the bedroom, and that's for the living room. So you can see that my new tile template is now being populated into this device browser. And you can see anything that overflows in height is scroll scrollable, which is nice. And, you know, also notice that, you know, the names for each of these tile templates, even though you're using a common tile, it has a unique name for the device. Loft chandelier, loft lights, wall spots. Um, and that's why I recommend that, you know, maybe you copy and paste that stock tile and alter it because these labels here will be set for you um, if you do it that way. If you, you know, if you go in and create a new tile from scratch, what you can do is you, you can copy those labels from the stock template into your new tile, and that'll work also. There you have the bedroom and the living room. All right, so to recap, 
basically you're working with a tile template that is linked to your device and each device has has its own link you can see this particular sunset off device is linked to a different tile so each device has you have the ability to link to to a unique tile um, so in this case um, we're linked to the light tile you know for everything in our example and the devices that get populated into that device browser or within groups. Loft lighting has four lights, the bedroom lighting has one, and the living lights, living room lights has has one as well. And you know, if if down the line you want to switch this up and add lights or whatever, all you need to do is go in and add that device. In turn, as well as if if you're no longer using a particular light and you want to get rid of it, you just go in and, and you delete it. So I'll delete this bar light. And that's part of the loft lighting group. And if I go into loft, you can see that now, now there's only four. That bar light is no longer included. One other thing wor worth mentioning is the order that these devices get populated into the device browser are the order that they're, they're in your group. So in the case of loft lighting, I have loft chandelier first, loft light second, and wall spots third. And if I hit start, you can see that's the order that they get added to the, to the device browser. If I come in, I can drag this and put it at the top, which is the wall spots. And now if I hit start, you can see wall spots is at the top. Okay. And the last thing is, is your device browser and the data triggers. In this case, there's three data triggers, one for each room. The binding is set for whatever button is checked. The name of this button is loft underscore button, is checked true. Setter is set for property group, loft lighting. which is right here. And the two other trigger data triggers are, are for the two other rooms. Okay, I just want to go back into my tile. And I want to take a look at the device bindings for the different elements that are in this tile. If I go into the collections editor, We'll look at the binding. You can see I'm using at device .switch. Now remember that we're using a common tile um, that gets applied to multiple devices that get loaded into the device browser. And because of that, we need a common command to handle those multiple devices. So that's where at device comes in. Home remote knows to point to the device that's getting loaded into the device browser by using at device. Um, if we come in and we look at some of the other bindings, um, take the slider. You can see this is also using at device. In this case, at device dot level. And this label here is the label that populates the tile with the name of the device. In this case, it's at device.display name. 
So that's going to be the case um, when you're using tiles. You, you're going to be using at device because that's a common part of that string that that will get applied to all the different devices that get loaded into the device browser. Okay, I just wanted to cover one last thing, and for this, I'm going to go into my production project. And what I'm going to cover is there may be a time when you need to display something on that tile to maybe just a handful of, of devices and not every device that gets populated into the device browser. So you may think that because you're using a common tile that, you know, it's either all or nothing, but there is a way, you know, if you need something to, to be displayed on only select devices, um, there's a way to do that. And I'll show you a specific example. I'm going to go into device ledger and you'll notice that six of these tiles have this sunset symbol on it. And what this represents is, is I have um, a sunset scene on my Vera hub that turns on these six lights at sunset and it turns them off at midnight every day. And I wanted a way to, you know, have this sunset symbol displayed only on those devices that are in, that are handled in that sunset scene and not on the tiles that are not in that sunset scene. Um, so let me go into the tile. I'm going to stop this. That's going to be this tile right here. Now you can see that sunset symbol is in this tile. And what I did was I set up a multi-data trigger. And we'll go into the collections editor and take a look at it. I have two conditions in here. The first condition is sunset mode dot switch. Now the value for this is on. So the sunset mode dot switch is a switch that's on my Vera hub and when that sunset scene gets activated at sunset this sunset mode switch gets turned on so when that happens this condition is true now I need a second condition that only applies to those six devices that are part of the sunset scene so what I did was I went in and I set the binding to at device dot device type and the value for that I set for light underscore sunset okay and I'll show you where that's applied in the actual device I'm good. I'm going to go in and pick one of the lights that are part of that sunset group. And let's see. Yeah, bar lights ledger. You can see in device type, I put light underscore sunset, which is that value that's part of that condition in the multi data trigger. Now you can see that if I pick bedroom lights, device type is just light. So that's a way to isolate certain devices that can be, you know, um, used with a multi-data trigger um, to, you know, to separate them from the other devices. Now, the same, um, the same device type is also applied to those other lights. Um, that are part of that group that are are triggered on when that sunset mode is activated. Okay, so we'll just switch back to this tile and look at the multi-data trigger once more. Again, we have two conditions. When both of these conditions is true, it fires the setter, which is set for is visible true. So when both of those conditions is true, this sunset symbol becomes visible. OK, 
Okay, I just wanted to go back um, into my device ledger. Okay, so this device ledger is something I set up because I wanted an overview of all the connected devices in my system. So for lighting, it's broken up into three columns for three different rooms. And I also have a section for my media closet, which is um, where I have my computer, computer monitor, my NVIDIA Shield, my PlayStation, and receiver. And Anything that's blue is a device that's on, and anything that's not blue is off. And I could come in and toggle my lighting on and off from right here. But I needed something that would handle um, the dimming on my lighting. So I needed to set up a separate device browser, and they're controlled by these three buttons at the top here. So if I switch between rooms, it displays the sliders for that particular room. So, as you can see here, I have um, my main lights in my bedroom. It has a slider for dimming and an on-off switch. Um, this is handled by a unique tile, and I wanted to mention also that this also has a tile for my Yamaha Re Receiver Zone 2, which is happens to be the zone for my bedroom. So I just wanted to point that, that out because um, it is possible to have different device types within one device browser. So they don't all need to be lighting or audio. It could be a mix as you can see here. So coming back to this, um, this control for my lighting, this is one tile for my, my bedroom lights. And if I switch out of here back to the ledger, this tile here is the same device for my bedroom lights, but you can see it's using a different tile. So I needed a way to attach two different tiles to one device. Um, so let me stop this. And if we go into that bedroom light, You can see that the tile template that this light is attached to is lighttile.xaml, and that's the light tile that has the slider in it. Okay, but I needed a, a separate way to use the tile for the ledger. So what you can do is, is you can copy and paste that device back into, into your device, and you'll end up with a second device and I already did it here and you can see it gives you bedroom lights one so that's the copy um, so you'll see that both of these devices are ID4 which is the ID that my Vera hub uses so both of them are, are ID4 so they're controlling the same device but what I did was is I went in and I changed the tile template to light tile ledger.xml, which is that second template that I, I needed for, for my ledger. So that's just a way, you know, if you need to use um, different tiles for one device, maybe, you know, you have one page that you want to display using one tile, and you have another page where you want it in a different format to display another tile. Um, that's the way you would do it. And, you know, you would just come in and you would add this copy to your group, um, you know, for the particular group that you want to add it to. Um, and, you know, I just want to point out that if you, you know, if you come in here and you do, do a synchronize, that copy will remain intact, okay? So you don't have to worry about when you do a synchronize that that'll be, that'll be deleted. It will stay, um, it'll, it'll stay in that, um, in that device as is. So anyway, 
Um, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, please reach out on the home remote Google group, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Um, so that's it for now. Um, take care, guys.